Hey friends, it's Lydia Nitya Griffith with Karma Chameleon coming to you today to talk about the feng shui of bedrooms. Um, other than the main bedroom, guest rooms, children's rooms. So with feng shui, flying stars feng shui, Chinese astrology, if these are things that speak to you, please subscribe, follow, all the good things. Often I like to read the charts of celebrities and famous people to better understand our own lives and our own charts. So again, welcome. So I brought you up to my guest room today. It's a sweet little oasis. And I offer private retreats here at Open Sky, the name I gave my, my house and property. So when we look at how do we utilize these spaces. Now, a guest room is often a room that's left open. <laughs> Though I have to say a lot of times it's the junk room, right? It's that room that somebody comes and visits a couple times a year. Maybe not at all. I just put a chair here. <sighs> I just moved this chair up here because I was thinking, wow, this is such a great space for somebody to retreat. Um, and that's kind of what you want to do. If your home uh, offers you a guest room space, take advantage of that. It could even become your own little oasis when it's not being used. And I will say that it is important to use all of your rooms in your house, unless the feng shui says that a particular direction, the flying stars are not positive. And if they're not positive, keeping that area dormant can be pretty much okay. Um, so for a guest room, it's a place where I've seen it be also a craft room with a sewing machine. It can be a place like this where you come and sit and read a good book. <laughs> I always leave books placed around just kind of an invitation for somebody to stop and pause and reflect. Um, and it can also be your own little hangout space to read a book and get away from your lovely family. You know, we all need those pauses. So the other thing besides guest rooms is children's rooms. Um, so we've, you know, talked about just now the importance of utilizing your, your rooms in your house to not have a clutter room. There is no room that is just for junk. That's why we have attics. That's why we have basements. That's why we have garages. That's why we have closets. Your rooms um, need to be functioning in some capacity using those spaces. Um, and so for children, that is also really important. I think um, in one of my early videos about my feng shui client stories, those are super fun. There was a house that I clearly remember walking into and it was a landmine of Legos and toys and balls. And it was like a pinata had exploded of kids stuff everywhere everywhere you went. These, this couple was having marital problems. They actually wound up getting divorced. He would come home from work and go straight to his office and close the door. It was so overwhelming of an environment to walk into. These two young boys, super loud, running around the house, there's stuff everywhere. And as I walked through the house, I noticed that there were pictures of these kids everywhere. Just pictures of the kids, drawings they had done. It was the kid's house. And I have seen this happen where, um, actually I'm thinking now of two other houses at least, where 
There are pictures of the kids, framed big studio portraits from all their ages, all over the house, as if that were the only artwork <laughs> that they could hang on their walls. And uh, what happens when you do that is the kids take over. You have basically said that the energy of the house is to cater entirely to your kids. And I know, um, like if you've got a situation with a really young child that's just walking and you've got to set up baby gates everywhere um, and your house kind of becomes this weird funky maze for a period of your life. And how do you work with that in a way that doesn't feel like it's all consuming your home? And especially when they're babies and there's bouncy chairs and there's play mats and all the things. And then it's in your, your bedroom, the, the, the laundry pile and the pile of nappies to be folded and all the things. You, you go to bed and it's all around you. You wake up, it's all in the kitchen. You go into the living room, it's all there. And it really doesn't matter what size space you have at this point, it's just everywhere. So I often recommend and that you confine kids' spaces to a single corner of the room. Now, that's not to say that the child isn't going to take what's in the corner of the room and throw it all over the living room or playroom, but that, that you teach them early on what cleanup time means and that they are part of that cleanup. So it does not fall to the parents at the end of the day to go through the house with this exhausting cleanup process. Yes, I remember those days. To have their things neatly organized using containers, tubs, bookshelves, all that, and that most of their things are kept in their room. And creating a children's room is creating their own oasis. You know, when you first have the idea that we're gonna build a family, well then, the next thing to do is build your nursery. So, you know, you've gotta build it in order to get there. So you take that, you know, you build the nursery with soft, beautiful colors and um, nothing too bright, nothing too busy, nothing overwhelming. It is a little teeny human space and as brilliant and fast growing as their minds are in those early years the world in it of itself is loud enough and fast enough. Create a bedroom for your child that is free of so much stuff. And this is true of all the ages. There is so much stuff. It's all right to say no to your kid at the store. It's okay not to get a treat every day more than okay, right? And I'm not gonna get into parenting. I've worked with children for nearly 20 years and raised a beautiful human myself who is nearly 25 years old. Um, I've experienced a lot with kids through the realm of mindfulness and yoga. So creating a calm space, creating a space that is their reading corner to encourage reading with a physical book and creating uh, uh, an area of their room that um, is for creativity, whether it's a, uh, a little easel, whether it's um, maybe they don't wanna draw, maybe they wanna build with Legos, but everything is contained and organized and what I have found with being a very organized person myself is that it reduces anxiety. Clutter and chaos promote 
anxiety. It promotes the feeling of being overwhelmed and out of control. When a child walks into their room, this is actually really fun. I'll share this story with you. So there is a feng shui of yoga. Yoga in and of itself, the root of it is to reach a place of calm, peace in the mind, body, and spirit. Through the tools of living yoga, and what is the number one tool but meditation? Well, to get into a meditative mind, which we can be in at any time of our day, being in the meditative mind requires a harmonious environment, access to peace, quiet, tranquility, and then the invitation to sit and be still. So I was at yoga camp years ago and I said to these older kids that were like over, probably over 10 years old, I said, what happens if you walk into your bedroom and you have clothes all over the floor? You can't tell what's clean, what's dirty. There's, you can't find your other shoe. You're trying to go to school or to camp or to a friend's house. And all of this is going on. What are you feeling? And they said, all those things overwhelmed and anxious and blah, blah, blah. My parents are always upset because my room's a mess. And the confessional begins of all the kids saying, oh my God, my room's a mess. So I told them, I want you to go home and clean your room. Not because your mother or father or parent or whoever told you to, or even me, but because I want you to do this as your own science experiment. Go home and clean up your room and notice how you feel. And they came back. Proof, proof was in the pudding, man. They all experienced it. That when your space is neat and tidy, your anxiety goes way down. Now, when they're little, you're creating their space for them. And again, using neutral, calm, soft, pastel tones, nothing bright, nothing overwhelming, just simple design, simple, simple. You do not have to fill their world with things. Give them opportunity to create things. I know one of my daughter's favorite toys as a kid was a pile of pine cones and an old tissue box and collecting those pine cones and putting them in that box and shaking it and emptying it out and filling it back up again. Kids do not need a lot of stuff. That's all I have to say. We live in a country that is all about consumerism. See if you can turn that off and show your kids how to just play with what's there. What's in the backyard? Man, you give a kid a stick, they're good for the day. It's amazing. When they get to be older and they're school age, begin to get them involved in how they would like to create their sacred space. And you can use whatever language you like. Find the direction that your child's room sits in. And I hope to baby Buddha, it is not the Northeast or the Southwest. Why am I saying that? Well, if you have, um, I will say this, not only a child's room, but if you have um, an elderly adult living with you, like a parent, if you have a long-term guest in your guest room, maybe a friend is in crisis and they've got to stay with you for a few months. Make sure that bedroom is not occupying the space that is for the man of the house or the woman of the house. Because, because, because. 
Mm. I'll be retelling a couple stories here from feng shui stories that I posted earlier. I had a situation where I had no other option but to put a teenager stepdaughter in a Southwest bedroom and watched her take over the house. And a relationship I was in that was already problematic escalated to the point where I wound up let leaving. I felt trapped in the house. I felt trapped in the situation. There was no other option. And sometimes life is like that. Um, another client, a client of mine had in her eldest son occupy her, his bedroom was in the Northeast, the place of the father. They could not get this kid to launch. He was in his mid twenties. He was not launching. He was not getting a career. And when he moved back in, in his mid twenties to that bedroom, he took over as the man of the house, young, vibrant energy. He even started wearing his father's coat. I mean, that tells you a lot right there. I made a suggestion for a career move and he wound up actually taking it and went on a grand adventure as um, working at a ski lodge in Colorado. Who knows? Um, another situation that I'm aware of is you've got another, you know, your guest room sits in the north, which is your career. And that's your guest room. And you've got a long-term stay elderly parent um, or a long-term stay friend. And they are in the room that occupies your career. And what happens when your career is sidelined and you're trying to get control of your career that's occupied by somebody living in that space. So we've got to be really mindful. What spaces are we giving away? And, you know, this bedroom that I'm sitting in right now is in the Northwest. It's the perfect space. It also partly occupies um, the West which is the place of children. So when my daughter comes to stay, she stays in here. When guests come to stay, they stay in here. The Northwest being the space of allies and friends and mentors, um, angel guides. So this is the perfect space for them to be in. And my bedroom, thankfully, is in the Southwest. Now, sometimes that does not always happen like that. Sometimes your, your floor plan just doesn't line up. You know, there are tricky things you can do, like placing a photograph of that person like in the Southwest, is there a place that you could picture, put the, a picture of the woman of the house? Mother figures. Um, or in the Northeast, having pictures of fathers in the family, specifically the father of the house. And then that you claim it, even though it's occupied. Though I have to say, I'd be a little bit creeped out if I was staying in someone's room and there's a picture of them sitting there staring at me. It's like, hey. So you got to kind of think of how, is it as obvious as a photo? Probably not. Is there a way to occupy that space in another way? For instance, and I'm literally creating this with you here, um, which is fun, you know, 
is to maybe take something that is very personal and very about you. Maybe you created a piece of pottery that you love. You place it in that room and here you have this long-term stay guest and you have placed that in there. And as you place that item, you claim the space. This is my Bagua corner. I am the woman of the house. This is my space. And it's interesting when we place things with intention, the energy that that sends out. In a similar way, if you have a long-term guest in a really important room, like the North, where your career is, is there an item that represents your career that you could place in there with the intention, I claim my career corner for myself. Yeah. Um, so it's important to look at where the bedrooms fall. Um, and to really honor each of these spaces and to utilize them to the best that they can be used. Coming back to kids, I just wanna wrap up with the kids' rooms. You know, as they get older, um, their room needs to transform with their growth, their interests, and looping them in. Maybe it's an annual thing. Maybe it's every couple years you think about, hey, how's your room working for you? Does it feel like an oasis? Do you feel really relaxed and happy in your room? Is there anything we could create to make it more fun or more enjoyable or more a place of refuge? And recognizing, especially as they get above the age of 10, they're gonna wanna be in their room left alone and honoring that as much as you want to have your own time as well, uninterrupted and without somebody dictating rules and regulations and things. Include them in the feng shui process. They may find that really cool and fun. I hope that this has been helpful. I welcome your questions and I hope to see you soon. Until then, be well.